Now, probably in terms of self-defense, yelling stop resisting <laughs> at a grounded opponent as you beat them is the thing that will stop you from getting sick. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start um, developing effective frames from the bottom. So um, we're not gonna do a, an escape technique yet, but I wanna show you how we maintain lat engagement and, and muscle recruitment as I advance my frame position on my partner, okay? So my partner's on top of me in mount. Um, he's a bit higher on me, that's cool. So from here, I'm not gonna start pushing on his hips straight away. Again, why would you? It's not effective at all. If you're big and strong, by all means, you can push your partner up. Okay, but I'm not big and strong in this situation, so I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna look for my frame, my prayer position, and I'm gonna squeeze my lats, core, back and chest, and I'm gonna use my feet to start walking back. He tries to get high on me now, he can't get high on me now. You know, if he starts trying to slide up on me, well, I'm gonna maintain the, the distance I have between his shoulders and my, my shoulders and his hips on me now. So that's not our first thing, our, our little back walk. Why do we want to back walk? So that the distance between my shoulders and hips are going to allow for an effective stiff arm frame. So now, from here, I've worked back from my stiff arm frame, my one-on-one -on -one hip positioning is going to happen. Again, I'm squeezing my lats in the whole time because the whole time, I am expecting my partner to be applying weight to me. So he can apply all the weight he wants to me now. And it's really hard for him to start working. Okay? And this is sort of our base escape position we're gonna start working from uh, when it comes to just our shrimps away from our partner. So just slide back down. That's all, you can see all that, right? He gave me a thumbs up, which means it's good. So my partner's slightly high on me. I can't frame, okay? He can be even higher on me if he wants. From here, I'm gonna compress my lats and I'm gonna walk my hips back. He can keep weight on me the whole time. As I do this, it doesn't matter. I then have access to my longer frames, my hands, okay? Again, squeezing my lats in. He can apply all the weight he wants to me, but now I can start hip escaping away. Again, the main thing is, when I'm starting to adjust my position, which you'll see in the next video, I want lat engagement. The last thing you see from um, someone learning basic mount escapes is they push. You do not want to push. Okay, so let's just look at, at what happens when you start pushing on your partner. So from here, let's say I push Jono off, and then I let go. What's going to happen immediately? Okay, he's going to recoup that position that, that I worked so hard to get rid of. Okay, and I know sort of breaking it down like this seems silly, but the amount of times I see someone do this and then they let go. It's a lot, <laughs> yeah? So that's really the thing to think about when you're creating these frames from the bottom. Um, when you start creating these frames from the bottom, they're a constant thing. It's a slow scaffolding to work your way out of the position, okay? When you get, you start framing, I expect that you will continue to keep framing and advance your frame position from the bottom until you get to a more and more dominant position, okay? Um, in terms of dominant position, having those hands framed out is great because it means your partner's hips are further away from you as opposed to being in tight to that prep position, okay? So that's something to really think about when we start looking at our, uh, our grips and, our, and where our frames are gonna go on our partner.